Hey, what's up everyone? It's Duskmos, and today I'm talking about the Auto Machines Boom. The Boom is a studio grade saturation device and it's got distortion and drive and it's got compression and filtering and there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do with things like the drive amount and the filter uh, adjustment. You can really kind of tweak what uh, you do with the box even beyond just compression um, or even keeping the compression all the way off. So you can be subtle, you can be aggressive, um, you can use this with a really delicate touch just for some final mastering, or you can really just slam the thing and um, really kind of completely change the character of whatever you run through it. I'm a big fan of what Auto Machines does. Um, I really like the designs of their units. Um, always really high quality, really cool looking, um, really great sounding. And uh, I love that you can get a, a set of them that just kind of have different color schemes. I don't know. I'm a sucker for that. Um, sue me. I don't, you know. <laughs> okay, so after the intro, we'll go over all of the knobs and connectors. And then we'll hook it up and we'll hear how it sounds. This is Signal Colors. Okay, so on the face of the boom, we've got six knobs and we've got eight buttons. On the back, we've got a uh, power input jack, a MIDI input, and then we've got in and out on stereo pairs of quarter inch jacks. Also in the uh, top middle, there's an eighth inch, you know, the headphone style jack connector for a side chain input as well. So you can do that whole ducking thing, which is really cool. The first knob is the compressor, and it's a one knob compressor. And so as you uh, change the knob, it varies the amount of um, like makeup gain and compression amount and ratio and all that kind of stuff. The drive control is the amount of drive applied, um, which goes from pretty subtle um, in one mode to really, really aggressive in some of the others. Um, and you can turn it up and down, um, which you know you can suit the taste. Mix is the dry and wet blend, and what's cool about that is you can go from you know completely dry to completely wet, but you can also go anywhere in between and do some of that um, uh, parallel compression, which basically just means mixing a compressed signal in with an uncompressed. The data knob is just the general um, data input for all of the options that you have down here. High cut is effectively a low pass filter, so as you turn it, um, it darkens the tone, cutting off all the higher frequencies um, until you open it all the way up again. Very helpful for when maybe the distortion is a little bit too crispy and you want to tame it a little bit, or even give it a little bit more of that warmth and uh, lo-fi kind of sound. Level controls the level of your um, signal that's being processed by the boom. Um, so if you have the mix all the way on the clean side, you won't obviously hear any effect there. But um, what you can do is, you know, turn the um, mix up to wherever you have the desired amount and then um, adjust the gain of the compressed and driven signal with the level amount as you mix it in. So you can really kind of get hands on and uh, find a really good blend for what sort of sound you're trying to capture. Active is just the bypass button, whether the effect is active or um, bypass. In gain takes you to the in menu um, that controls the gain amount of the incoming signal. You can kind of match that up with um, how hot your signal is that's going in, and that'll impact the drive amount and some of the compression as well, so um, you can really kind of uh, experiment with that and see where that takes you. Attack and release are both the uh, amounts of time it takes for the compressor to begin its reaction and then back off its compression reaction based on the signal. So a really long attack and a short release means after it gets um, triggered, then it'll it'll take a while to actually compress and then it'll click off quickly. Low cut just cuts the low frequencies that pass through the device, which also controls um, how it responds to the incoming signal. You can recover those lower frequencies with the blend just blending back in uh, the clean signal. Disto is the distortion menu. Um, there are different um, options for distortion, and um, I find that the first one is kind of the one that you would probably use the most for just a gentle warming um, effect, and then the others will just kind of really increase in um, intensity or characteristic, um, and you'll hear some of that. I'll demo that. Gate is the gate menu that controls um, what at what threshold the gate gets triggered, and we'll also hear how that sounds. 
And last but not least, preset is the preset manager. Um, you hit it once, and if you want to be in bank two, preset four, then you just hit preset, and then it'll flash in the first row. Um, you just hit two, and then once that is registered, then you hit four. All right, that's for the knobs, buttons, and connectors. Let's get it hooked up and listen to this thing. Okay, so I'm here with the Electron Octatrack Mark II, the 8-track dynamic performance sampler. Um, and I've got a couple patterns that I've made on it that I actually used for the Alicia character video. Um, so if you're curious on kind of how the boom compares to that device, I think that would be a cool thing to check out um, if you are interested enough to do that. But before that happens, obviously we've got to see what we've got going on with the boom. So this is my first pattern, clean. I'm going to call out some things to pay attention to. So the first one is the volume of the shakers in relationship to everything else and the volume of the claps compared to everything else. The claps are kind of loud, shakers are kind of low. We'll get into why that matters in a bit. Okay, so for now we'll go ahead and activate the boom. So you can hear it, not much change there. Except the volume of the claps came down a little bit. Clean. We can see more of an impact as we increase the compression level. the shakers came up in the mix. Bypass. Quiet shakers, loud claps. Quieter claps and louder shakers. So it's kind of compression in a nutshell. It's sort of leveling it out everything, squishing your volume of what's up here down and bringing up what's low more towards the middle. A little 101 there. <laughs> So we can also kind of do the bypass thing um, by just flipping the mix over or parallel compress by just blending in a little bit more of the original signal. We'll come back to messing with that a little bit more down the line and you'll see why. Because we have the mix fully up right now, we can bring back filter because it's 100% covering the whole mix. All the way to nothing. And that's really cool to have that built in. play it, which is really nice. Reminder again of what the clean signal sounds like. And back to the compression. We'll up the compression a bit. So you hear it really squished everything there. All the way up to 12 o'clock, so from all the way down here to fully noon, that is just normal compression.
And then after you um, go up past noon, you start getting into negative compression. Which is some pretty wild stuff. And then engaged. It's so really slammed. So here you could mix in some of the original clean signal. You just get a little bit of a different feel. We'll bypass. So definitely a bit more squished, but with some of the clean signal added in. Like the full mix. So the compression is reacting um, to the incoming signal, obviously, but based on our attack and release parameters that we set here. So. I'll keep the attack very short, but we'll increase the length of the release. You'll kind of hear how that changes things. And you can get to the point where the release is so long that um, attacks will happen faster than it will release, so it'll basically always stay fully squished like this. And you can use this to greater effect, especially when um, you're using drive and stuff. You'll hear it more a little bit later, but um, that's just kind of a demonstration of sort of how that reacts. I'll back down the amount. We've got the mix all the way up, but we'll... Kind of go back to the original there. So I haven't used much drive yet. We'll go ahead and use some now. So you can hear it's definitely gritted things up a bit. Bypass. And you can hear it's more separated, the different sounds are, and obviously a bit cleaner. But here you get a little bit grit, and a little bit of that compression, or a lot of it, kind of, it's pretty compressed. We can back off the mix a little bit, introduce a little bit more of the clean, so you can get a little bit more fidelity coming through. It was a pretty cool sound. Let's go ahead and bypass again. I still have a little bit of the high cut filter engaged. As you can hear, obviously because the mix isn't fully wet, I can cut it entirely. You basically just hear the dry signal. I'm gonna back off the level a little bit and up the mix all the way because I'm gonna increase the drive. You'll kind of hear what that does. So 
So you bypass. We're only in the first type of um, distortion, so we'll switch into the second. You know, instantly hear a little bit more aggression on the drive characteristics. This is tube style. Really crunchy. Back to clean. This is where the mix would come in handy again, because you can blend out of the compressed distorted and bring in the clean. So you get some of that flavor still without as much of that full in your face harshness. Unless you're going for that, of course. Bypass. And engaged. The compression and the um, distortion react differently to the amount of gain you have coming in. You can adjust that here. So you already hear there's a, quite a bit more of an aggressive characteristic. It's kind of cool to explore. Especially if you change out the distortion types. This is the third one. This is Fuzz. Blending in some of the clean again. So if I play with the attack and release now, so here you can hear the release is super long. Shortening it. So you hear more of the signal come back in between those kick hits. 
I was gonna mess with the compression. Well, actually, yeah, I'll go back to where we were. You don't notice as much here. So you kind of do that negative compression where it sort of does the ducking a bit more. Let me go back and shorten it all the way. So just fast reaction times. Change the distortion type again to the last one here. Just the in game. It responds differently. Let's do that again. So right now, um, this is low cut. We've got the low cut on the second option. You can go all the way up, come all the way down. So you can hear that kick really getting smashed. Or you go all the way up here, and it really isn't. It's gonna keeping the bass out of the drive portion. But again, introduce some of the dry, and you can reintroduce those lower frequencies you cut out. Doing these filter sweeps like this really shows you how much this is adding. because it only filters the wet signal. And I've got the mix, as you can see, at about two o'clock. It's kind of cool. Between mix and the cut, drive amount, low cut, which distortion type, you can really hear how much you can craft some crunchier, warmer, more distorted sounds than what you started out with. because I wanted you to hear more of the specific nuances, but now we'll just go for it for a few minutes. Thank you. 
go that is the end of the first pattern um, i'm going to reset things here and we'll come back with the second pattern okay back after doing a quick reset um, i want to kind of restore this to where things were make sure that we were at um, a nice unity gain between activated deactivated and i also um, set up the side chain um, input connector I'm coming out of the queue here and i will use that later so that's there okay so the clean pattern sounds like this so that's that activate the boom and you can tell there's barely any change I tried to match it as much as I could. Even though we have full mix going on here. So let's change that. We'll up the compression amount. So in this one you can hear the reverb in the background came up so we'll just bypass yeah so already has a little bit of something going on here just some normal compression drive gonna feather the level back some so now we're in some good crunch territory with the attack and release times here so this is the attack really slow or sorry really fast and the release just a little bit longer so you hear that So 
what's interesting, you can mix in the clean. Back off the compression amount. I'm actually up the release a little bit. Actually, we'll go up two notches. So you hear now, it's getting triggered, for the most part, faster than it can recover. So that's why you hear those long dips between heavy compression. But that could be cool to mix in a little more of the clean. So you have these little swells. Let's try a different type of distortion here. So we'll go from boost mode. Oh, it jumped. To tube mode. We'll back off the compressor so you'll hear it a little more. Let's go back to the release time, shorten it up. Still has that rhythmic quality to it. Full mix. Bypass it. Clearly a lot different. Let's adjust our in-game. Make the drive a bit more subtle. We'll go for a full blend, full wet mix here. Change up the distortion type again. Go to the next algorithm, which is fuzz. Cut a little of the highs out. Huge. 
Go for full web mix again. Bypassed. And active. We'll blend in the clean again. So you can hear with some high drive, some heavy filtering, you hear that kind of warm rumble, which is just this bit. See, there's a lot of blending you can do. Even just adding in something like this. You can hear it, but it's subtle. Backing down the compression. <laughs> bring the in gain back, and we'll bring the distortion back to just a boost. Have a little bit of drive there. We'll bring the level up too. So the sidechain input. Um, I'm coming out of the Q output of the Octatrack, going into the sidechain input, and you can see the display went blank. And that's because right now, I'm not sending this track to the Q output. Um, but you do that this way, and now you can see I've got this kick going in on every, every four steps. So, you can hear not much change or anything, because we kind of have everything pretty tame right now. The drive up. So you can hear it kind of ducking every time that gets triggered. Instead of relying on just the incoming audio, so we'll bypass. cool. So here again you can change up the release times to get maybe a more pronounced effect. Versus that. So you hear the dips are greater and longer. If I changed up the trigs, if I didn't put it on every four, um, then it could recover faster in between. Um, I'll go ahead and do that. Let's see. Six, six, 
Six. You'll see now it's only on one and nine. To make the release even longer or short, and it just kind of dips just that little bit every so often. But again, you can mix in the clean. To make the release longer. So I'm gonna go back in and add these trigs back. But I'll shorten the release again. Change up the distortion algorithm. Go for square, just really go nuts. Shorten the release up. And there we go. That is the Octatrack with a couple uh, funky loops going into the boom. So, what do I think about the Auto Machines boom? Well, I think it excels as a kind of one-stop shop um, for saturation and compression and even filtering. Um, I think it does a lot in just the one box and um, it does a great job at those things, which is really, really cool. I also like that it's part of an ecosystem. Um, I like, you know, you can have, like I said in the intro, like that you can have three different units that do very different things, but are of really good quality, really good size and control and all that kind of stuff. As I mentioned, build quality um, I think is really, really high quality, good attention to detail. Um, I really like the labeling of these uh, jacks. Um, it's cool on their boxes, they have them all upside down or right side up, depending on how you want to look at it. So when you um, are leaning over it to plug it in, you can see what you're doing, which is a nice touch. Um, the Boom has an amazing build quality, uh, yeah, super, super solid and um, robust um, metal chassis, and it feels like it's a solid brick of device that uh, is going to really stand the test of time. The sound quality really can go from mild to wild. It definitely, you know, adds that analog character and crunch, and it definitely does what it says on the tin. However, I think for me, because I don't use a lot of distortion in my work, um, it kind of skews a bit too heavily on kind of the high distortion level side of things um, between the different distortion models. Granted, I know you can turn those off um, and you can also uh, tame them a bit um, with the filter knob um, to kind of bring them back down um, and even mix them out. So you can, you know, find some balance there, which I definitely did. and. Um, I do think 
kind of saves it for me a little bit. Um, but I just kind of wish there was a little bit more in that kind of low, medium sort of saturation range. Now, obviously, as a compressor, um, you know, this is kind of as easy as it gets. It's a one knob compressor. Um, it kind of does all the thinking for you. You just have to dial in and just see what sounds good, which I think is a really good approach. The high cut filter is really nice to have as well, because again, like I said, it can tame some of the you know craziness of the distortion. But even if you don't have it distorted, it can still just act as a low pass. And that's really cool. So overall, the Boom is just a great all-in-one box that does distortion, compression, filtering, um, and it does it to a high degree. Um, and I think for something that does so much and does it in such a quality way, in such a quality build, um, is something that is really worth considering. And I think it's a lot of bang for your buck. But that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.